Hey everybody, this is another book uh, by Dan Santat, and it's called The Guild of Geniuses. Another neat book that I just got delivered. I have permission to read this from Scholastic. Um, and one thing I love about this author is he just kind of draws you in. Uh, whether he's writing or like in our last book that we read, Hensel and Gretel Ninja Chicks, um, he draws so well. Um, just kind of pulls you into the story and it's perfect for just checking out in a little private space in your house so you can delve into another world. So The Guild of Geniuses by Dan Santat. Mr. Pip was best friends with Frederick Lipton, the famous actor. Every morning they ate breakfast. Every evening, Mr. Pip practiced different tricks while Frederick studied his movie lines. Sometimes life got hectic, but things usually worked out fine. On the morning of Frederick's 30-something birthday, Mr. Pip jumped out of bed and rushed to give Frederick his gift. But many gifts from other people had already arrived. The Sultan of Brunei gave Frederick a solid gold car, the President of the United States invited him to dinner at the White House. With all the commotion, there never seemed to be time for Mr. Pip to give Frederick his gift. Look at all the different presents that, that Frederick got. The birthday festivities kept Frederick busy, but every time he saw Mr. Pip, he looked sad. What's wrong with you, Mr. Pip? Frederick asked. I've never seen you so miserable. So Frederick took him to every vet in town, but each one declared Mr. Pip as fit as a fiddle. There has to be someone who knows what to do with you, Frederick despaired. Then an idea came to him. If you can see in the picture, there is a sign for the Guild of Geniuses. Problem solved in a jiffy. No question too difficult. Win a prize if you stump us. Open 24 hours. Of course! Everyone knew the Guild of Geniuses. It consisted of four of the smartest people in the world who owned patents on more than 10,000 inventions. There was Dr. Lancaster, inventor of the portable weather machine, Dr. Monrovia, who built Capital Pong, the ping pong champion and owner of 12 world titles. and Dr. Torrance, who created the anti-gravity belt. Finally, there was Dr. Glendale, who was known for inventing the greeter. And look at all the different languages the greeter speaks. How many different languages do you recognize on that page? So Frederick took Mr. Pip down to the guild and told him his problem. I'll be out of town for two weeks to promote my new movie, but I'll be back after that. Please help Mr. Pip in any way you can, Frederick said. He gave Mr. Pip a quick hug and left. The geniuses huddled around Mr. Pip and began brainstorming solutions. They say music soothes the savage beast, said Dr. Lancaster. Maybe the unmanned one-man band can play music that will make him happy again, said Dr. Glendale. 
So they sat Mr. Pip in front of the robot and programmed it to play beautiful music. Those of you in music class, can you recognize some of the notes that are on that page? Quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. Half notes. But it only made Mr. Pip sleepy. If at first you don't succeed, they all said. Perhaps Mr. Pip would like to play with other monkeys, said Dr. Glendale. So they brought some in from Africa. Unfortunately, Mr. Pip didn't speak their language, and the only thing the other monkeys wanted to do was eat bananas peeled for them by the robo-chef. Well, that didn't, go quite, uh, that didn't quite go according to plan, Dr. Lancaster said. We'll have to try again. Perhaps he wants to feel more important, said Dr. Monrovia. So they built a rocket ship and sent Mr. Pip up into space to be the first monkey on the moon. When he returned, the city threw him a big parade. Inconceivable, Dr. Torrance muttered. Mr. Pip isn't wa even waving back to the people. Back to the drawing board once again, they all groaned. The end of the two weeks finally came and Frederick returned. We're sorry to inform you that we have been stumped by your inquiry, doctor, said Dr. Glendale. This has never happened to us before, but on a positive note, it means you have won a prize. Frederick took the prize and was at a loss for words. But over the silence came some familiar music. That prize is a necktie that says, I'm a bright guy doesn't seem like a great prize for them not to being able for not being able to figure out why Mr. Pip is so sad. The unmanned one-man band had begun to play Happy Birthday while the Robo Chef brought out a banana bread birthday cake. With a flourish, Mr. Pip presented Frederick with a gift. Frederick unwrapped a moon rock that Mr. Pip had brought back from his trip into space. Next to it was the picture card that Mr. Pip had made a few weeks earlier. A paperweight, how wonderful, Frederick said. Even better is this fantastic card. Hey everyone, look, isn't this amazing? That evening, they all celebrated at the penthouse. Here's to Mr. Pip, said Frederick, the best friend a guy ever had. Frederick and Mr. Pip made up dances to calypso music. They screeched and sang all kinds of songs. Spending time together was the most fun either had for weeks. In fact, it was all Mr. Pip had needed in the first place. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. The end. So that whole story, all of those geniuses trying to figure out what Mr. Pip really wanted, and it was just to give Frederick his best friend his birthday card and to spend some time with him. So I love this book because it reminds us that sometimes the thing we need is the simplest. It might be just time with someone special. So take care of yourself.